Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel or just subscribed, my name is Lynette, and today I wanna to share with you my miraculous slash disastrous delivery story of my daughter, Adelina. To give you a little background on my um, delivery, you have to know a little bit about my pregnancy. My pregnancy felt very normal. Um, I would say I had that like first trimester, yeah, first trimester, I was very nauseous, um, very tired, just felt like I'd been hit by a truck. And then when I hit second trimester, everything felt great. My skin was glowing, my hair loss actually subsided quite a bit. And um, yeah, it just felt like really easy. And it wasn't until I hit the third trimester that my doctor, my OB, informed me that I was having blood platelet issues. And um, I mean, aside from what he was seeing in my blood work, I felt fine. I had low blood platelet count, and blood platelets are super important because it helps your blood to coagulate and to prevent you against excess blood loss or hemorrhaging, which is especially important when you're going to deliver a baby because you obviously bleed a lot um, when you're delivering a child. So getting that news was definitely scary. We weren't sure if this was potentially an autoimmune disorder or if it was just a gestational thing, similar to like how some women get gestational diabetes. So his concern with the autoimmunity was that um, it could potentially, there's a blood protein is how he explained it, that could cross from my blood into the into the placenta and into baby Adelina, and therefore she would also have low blood platelets, which would be especially concerning because when a baby is born, um, like naturally through the birth canal, um, the baby's head goes through a lot of trauma. Um, the baby's head hits the pelvic bone often during contractions, and so um, if the baby has low blood platelets, uh, he basically explained to us that that could cause internal bleeding or hemorrhaging for our daughter, um, which could lead to strokes and a bunch of other birth issues and um, potential even death, he said, of our of our child. So of course when we heard that, we were uh, definitely a little terrified, um, and he said the option for us would be to have a scheduled cesarean, which was the last thing that I wanted. I wanted an all-natural birth, um, like no epidural no spinal tap, um, I really just wanted it to be a normal, natural birth. And so getting that news, while really kind of disappointing, I also knew that it was for the safety of my child um, and for in her best interest to do that, and my OB seemed um, pretty set on having me have a scheduled C-section. So, um, we scheduled our C-section for January 10th, 2017, and that was the day that my daughter was born. Josiah and I actually arrived at the hospital a little bit early. Um, we were told by our OB to just, like show up a few hours, like three hours before the C-section time, which he said would, would be around 12 noon. And um, so I think we got there around 9, and the lady at the front desk told us like, oh, you don't even have to come till like 90 minutes before. So we had an hour and a half to kill, and I remember Josiah and I walked into um, like the lobby area of the hospital that I delivered at, which was actually a really nice hospital, and um, we just sat and talked for about an hour and a half, which was so nice. It was kind of the last, our last little hurrah of it just being him and I before we had our first baby. After the hour and a half passed, we went back in, got checked in, and it's definitely a little scary when you're checking into hospital because you're basically like signing your life away. Um, they have you sign all these like waivers and uh, just, yeah, it's it's scary. Um, I feel like delivering a child and birthing is not for the faint of heart, so for all the mamas out there, props to you. I get checked in, they are monitoring baby's heartbeat, they're monitoring my heartbeat, um, they have me change into my hospital gown. I've been, you know, waiting in the kind of just like pre-op room before they take me in on the little gurney. And um, my parents came in, kind of just gave me their kisses and love, loved me. Um, and I had a really great nurse. She didn't come into the operating room with me and nor was she with me in the recovery room, but she was so wonderful, very uppity, very just casual, and it made me feel um, a bit more comfortable. Uh, so anyways, I waited maybe an hour 
Um, and then they wheeled me into the um, operating room. Josiah had to wait outside while they administered the spinal tap. Um, so spinal tap is basically they do like a local anesthetic um, and then they insert the spinal tap. So to be honest, I really didn't feel even the local anesthetic. Um, by the time that they were putting in the spinal tap, I could I had like a very slight sensation, but um, could barely feel anything. Turns out, because I've had back surgery, another story for another day, um, they were having issue um, putting in my spinal tap, which I brought in all my paperwork for from my back surgery to let them know which vertebra and part of my like spine that they had actually done the surgery on. Um, turned out they had to do the spinal tap three different times because of my scar tissue from my back surgery. And um, the first two times I could kind of feel it. It wasn't painful, it just felt like more of a tingling sensation, which is important for later on in the story. Um, and I told them like, oh, I actually feel that in my left leg. And I told them, oh, I feel that in my right leg. And then the third time he put it in, the, he put the spinal tap in correctly and I didn't feel it at all. So um, basically that was that. They have the screen up and they don't really tell you like, okay, we're going to start. They just start and the anesthesiologist is standing behind me. Josiah wasn't even in the room yet. Um, and he's telling me like, okay, they've already started the incision. They've already like, basically they've already cut you open and they're like getting through your innards to get to your baby. But they don't say that. They're just kind of like, okay, the incision's opened or something. So... I'm lying there thinking, oh my gosh, like this is crazy, I didn't even know it started. Somebody, I don't know who, one of the assistants goes out, gets Josiah, they bring him in, he's sitting next to me on my right hand side, and then I start to feel the excruciating like pain and pressure of what they were doing. I have never felt that immense pressure, it was to the point where I could feel like I could barely catch my breath. Um, which I think is it's actually really common for men who deliver by cesarean. There's just so much pressure because they're like moving your like innards around and then like pulling out the baby. So I'm lying there and I start to like verbally respond. I'm not screaming, but I am definitely like, oh, okay, there's a lot and I'm, you know, basically articulating what I'm feeling. I keep saying like I'm feeling a lot of pressure and I'm obviously like kind of like writhing in pain a little bit because it is not a walk in the park by any means. Um, I would say a cesarean, and this is not to scare any woman off in any way, um, but I just, I don't know why, I was just so naive to think it wouldn't be as painful as a vaginal birth, um, but a cesarean is, I feel like a very, very violent surgery. It's beautiful because you're birthing your child, but it's also very like, Walking Dead esque because like they're cutting you open and like your innards are like outside of your body. That's the reality of it. So, anyways, <laughs> I remember feeling the immense pressure. I remember writhing in pain and just like wanting it to be over. And I'm and I remember thinking like, what is it taking so long? Like, just get her out already, you know. And um, probably about ten minutes into. Maybe it was even less. It could have been less. It felt like 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, 10 minutes into them, from the time they started the incision, um, I hear the anesthesiologist tell Josiah, if you look over the cover, you'll see your daughter being born. And so there, lo and behold, there she was. I could kind of see her in the distance, just barely over the cover, because I'm lying flat and there's like that big screen in the way. So you, they can't, you can't see them cutting you open. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I heard her cry and I immediately, and like take her first breath and I immediately started to cry. Um, and at that point they called Josiah over to go to like the little incubator where they weigh her and kind of clean her up and cut the umbilical cord and all that. And, um, they're at this point, they're starting to stitch me up. So... It was crazy. The moment that she was born, all that pain and pressure that I had been feeling in the cesarean, it was still happening, but it was like my mind, it was like mind over matter, you know? I was so preoccupied with my child and hearing her take her first breath and 
um, hearing her her voice for the first time and just seeing her presence in the room um, like outside of my body because she had you know been in it but now she's like out <laughs> um, and just seeing her um, totally like it, I was so crazy how your body just kind of like I don't even know I've never had that experience before where you totally block out the pain it's like the pain sensors in your body are like done and you're just fully engaged in this baby so um, I could see her off in the corner on the right hand side of the room and they were cleaning her and um, she was crying and my husband standing there with her and it was definitely a little scary I wanted him to be next to me but you know it was kind of this like okay this is kind of how life is going to be now there's going to be this other little person that we're responsible for and my husband isn't always going to be by my side he's going to have to take care of her and I'm going to have to take care of her and yeah it was really very quite um it was just very meaningful so anyways next thing I knew my husband bring they gave her, her to him which I guess makes sense he's the dad <laughs> but he brought her over to me which I didn't think was going to be able to happen um and the th only thing that I could do at this point was like rub her little nose I remember rubbing her little nose and just seeing her sweet perfect little face it was so round and kind of you know they had that like white filminess even though they had cleaned her um, and she was just perfect she was so perfect um, and Josiah stayed there for maybe like a minute or two and then he took her away and as soon as he took her away and they left the room um, to go like monitor her and just make sure she was doing okay um, I immediately felt the pain and it was really bad and I remember actually one of the doctors who was operating on me who which who was not the OB but I, she assisted him I don't even know who she was I never even got introduced to her she just like showed up and was assisting in the OB cutting me open um, but she um, said something along the lines of she's really sensitive in these layers and so every time they were stitching me I could feel I felt like a needle was just poking me which obviously they were doing much more than that um, but I was at this point I could very much feel like them stitching me up um, I came to find out later from like a friend of a friend whose mom was in the operating room because she's um, I forget what her like title is but she assists in the operation I think she hands the instruments to them um, she said that they were all very concerned about my spinal tap and my back because um, I wasn't taking the spinal tap and then I was very sensitive um, to the, the surgery um, that they were actually considering just putting me out under general anesthesia halfway through the um, cesarean uh, so I mean I wasn't screaming but I think they could tell that I was in a lot of pain um, probably more than what was the usual and so yeah it was not common I'd say it was definitely more abnormal the amount of pain that I experienced in the cesarean um, because they were concerned about it <laughs> and were like we just need to knock her out because she's like in a lot of lot of pain they finished sewing me up they put me on a gurney they wheel me over to the recovery room where my husband and Adelina are and um, I immediately I'm a breastfeeding mom so I breastfed her right away she latched great um, and then I knew my body was in shock at this point because I could not stop shaking um, they layered and layered and layered like heavy heavy blankets on me not because I was cold but just to kind of like as a way of comfort and like reducing anxiety basically I wasn't having an anxiety attack thank God because I've had those um, but I definitely was my body was definitely in shock which makes sense because I was not laboring when they I had the cesarean it was like I just showed up at the hospital and they literally cut me open took out my kid sewed me back up and that was it and like that's shocking to the human body so I think I shook for about like an hour or so and Josiah my husband found out later he was like really nervous about that he thought something went wrong he didn't know why I was shaking so much um, but yeah, Adelina did so great in the recovery. She like passed all of her tests with flying colors. She was born perfectly healthy. I was so immensely grateful. Um, they also checked her blood platelets to make sure that they weren't low, and they weren't. She was born with perfectly healthy blood platelet levels, and 
That was so wonderful and then at the same time kind of disappointing because she could have had been delivered completely naturally and she would have been totally fine. But there was really no way for the OB to tell whether or not they had low blood platelet issues before, um, before her birth. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, if I'd gone back, I would have had a natural birth, obviously, but uh, that was just kind of what happened. Now, the scary part really comes in my recovery. Um, basically, the first 24 hours, I didn't sleep at all because I was, like, terrified that she would, like, stop breathing or something. And, met, and we had nurses checking us, like, every two hours. So, I mean, we were fine. Looking back, I'm thinking, Lynette, you could have relaxed a bit more. Um, but by the second day, I knew that there was something terribly wrong. I don't know why the camera like shut off filming, but hopefully I can get it finished. Long story short, I was feeling, I have this numbness in my legs. The anesthesiologist comes in and tells me the scary news of like, you have, you could have internal bleeding because of your low blood platelets from the spinal tap. So yeah, it could cause permanent paralysis and oh my God, that was the other reason why I didn't sleep. Like maybe the first, I don't think I slept for 48 hours after I delivered her because I was petrified of my losing mobility and losing my legs, like my movement, uh, I would fall asleep and then I would wake up and I would be completely numb from the waist down and that was terrifying. Um, and then it just continued on. We had like three or four anesthesiologists come in and check me and they all, the last one finally said without saying, but kind of like in between the lines of yeah, there was basically some spinal trauma from the spinal tap and um, you, this pain that you're feeling and these sensations of numbness and tingling and all that um, could continue anywhere from six months to a year. But I was telling my husband, like, I don't even feel my incision. I don't even feel the pain. I don't even feel the pain, like, of my incision. My back is what is killing me. And it was like... It just felt like um, like ice picks, if that makes sense. Like little tiny ice picks were just kind of constantly jabbing my back. Um, that like sensation of tingliness, but it was very cold and I felt super sensitive to the touch. So like even any fabrics resting on my back hurt. Um, so they had me wear, wearing like some type of girdle thing to help with my incision, but I told them it was causing so much pain in my lower back that I needed to take it off. I'd rather not have anything. They gave me like these really strong painkillers on the fourth day, um, right before I, we were supposed to check out from the hospital. And you guys, I was in so much pain. I couldn't even pick up my kid. And she was only six pounds at this point. I remember going into the bathroom, closing the door and just like, Praying. Like, there's no way that I can go back to work with this amount of pain. How am I supposed to take care of a child with this amount of pain? And I remember being so angry because I felt like, you know, initially I didn't think I could get pregnant. And we can see conceiving Adelina was a complete miracle, um, totally unexpected. And I just felt like this was like totally a gift from God and what he des desired for our family and for us and wanted to give Adelina to us as a gift. And then getting the, finally getting to the end of it where I'm delivering her and she's here and now I'm excru like experiencing this excruciating pain where I can't even lift her and hold her. I just felt so defeated. I felt depressed I just thought there's no way there's no way that I can feel this pain I can't imagine living in this pain for six months to a year or even longer I just cannot do it so we checked out and usually when you leave the hospital you think it's like a really happy like you're taking your baby home oh my gosh this is amazing and in my mind I'm thinking do I need to go see a doctor about my back pain do I need to go to physical therapy I mean the the hospital really didn't do anything. They didn't make any suggestions. I'm thinking, do I need to talk to my OB about this? What is he gonna do? Is he gonna refer me to another doctor, some specialist? What is, what's gonna happen, you know? It was terrible. Um, I remember, so I remember us 
checking out and leaving and I remember just sitting in the car even was so painful and not for my like actual incision. My incision was like, I didn't even know it was there. Didn't even hurt, it was like all back pain, leg pain, um, just like excruciating pain. So anyways, we get to, um, we get into our car and we're driving off and it's like a gray day, it was raining and I just felt like this was so appropriate for how I felt in my spirit. And um, we got home to our little tiny one bedroom and put our little baby in our, her crib, um, which that crib used to look so big with her in it and now she looks like, the crib looks too small for her. Um, it's a mini crib. But yeah, I just remember feeling completely defeated and I walked into the bedroom and our bed is like very comfortable so I thought maybe if I just lie in the bed I'll feel better. And I lie down and I just felt the weight of the world. And I just started to pray and I prayed and I prayed and I just asked God to heal my back. Um, and he had done it before. He had done it before when I went on the world race. I used to have like, my back's this crazy story, but basically I had a tumor in my back. It was not cancer, but they had to remove it. I had that removed in high school, but I still had like low grade to chronic pain. Um, but it was manageable and it only like flared up on occasion and I had to be very careful with like what types of exercises I were do was doing so nothing like really high intense uh, exercises because it affected my back. Um, my daughter woke up so let me go get her. So we're back. My daughter woke up so she's going to hang out with us for the remaining of the birth story. So basically um, my back benign tumor, got it removed in high school, was living with chronic pain afterwards, um, but I wanted to do this thing called the world race where you basically live, and I mentioned that in my 30 facts about you video, but the world race I knew was going to be in a lot of really uncomfortable situ um, sleeping situations, probably sleeping on the floor sometimes, um, which actually did happen multiple times. I knew I was going to be carrying um, a 40 pound pack on my back. So I just told the Lord, like, you have to fix this. I don't think I can do that, all that with my back. So he did. He fixed it when I was on the world race, or before the world race, during our training. Um, a bunch of people came over and prayed for me, and the pain, I didn't even realize the pain was gone until, like, a week later, and I was like, wait a minute. I don't have any more back pain. <laughs> and it was perfect ever since then. Like, I never had any back pain until this. And so that's why I felt so devastated because I just thought the Lord had healed my back and why would it be damaged again and how could it possibly be yet damaged again? So I was very devastated. So anyways, the day we get released, bringing Adelina home and, <laughs> hi my baby. <laughs> and, um, are you camera shy? Are you camera shy? Um, but yeah, so we bring her home I'm feeling really devastated. I lay on our bed and I start to pray and I just asked God to heal my back and I told him, I can't do this. I can't take care of her. You know, this was a gift that you gave us and I feel so defeated. I feel like this is the work of the devil, the enemy. He just wants to, um, you pulling mommy's hair? He just wants to deter and take away from the gift that she is by giving me a problem that I have to like deal with. And I just basically told God, like, I'm not getting out of this bed until you fix it. I'm not going to move until you fix it. You're going to make my back better again because you've done it before. And I think your promises endure. And so if you've healed me before, you're going to heal me again. Like, I was demanding it. I was adamant. And my husband said, he had walked in, laid, like, laid beside me. And he just felt the Lord, um kind of prompt him to lay his hands on my back and immediately when my husband laid his hands on my back I could feel the warmth um, that healing touch just come over me and I just told my husband like where to put his hands on my back and on my lower back and um, yeah it the pain just kind of like left and I remember praying um, for grace for the mistakes that had been made by the anesthesiologist and the pain started to really lift and then I started to pray like against the devil and like his plans to corrupt what was good and what was supposed to be intended for like 
you know, beauty and like this is such a beautiful time delivering a child. There's life and, um, you know, it's new beginnings. And so anyways, you're so sweet. So um, when I prayed over that, I just felt like more of the pain and that like sensation leave me. And yeah, by the end of it, by the end of me praying, and by the end of my husband, like, finishing, you know, just, like, keeping his hands on my back, um, I, the pain was completely gone. Oh, are you okay? The pain was completely gone. It was completely gone. You're a miracle, and then God gave me a miracle for my back. Oh, you're hungry. Um, so anyways, it was crazy. It was such a crazy story um, from conceiving her to delivering her and then the recovery of it. I feel like it's not the usual, it's not the norm. Some people may like wonder like or question like, oh, did you, your back wasn't really hurt. It probably just like healed itself within a few days. But it really wasn't like that at all. It was like I was in excruciating pain. I laid in the bed. I was like, God, you got to fix this. Ten minutes later, I was like, no more pain. And I stopped taking my pain meds and all that, like, just done. And then at that point, then I could feel my cesarean. It was like, oh, okay, I did have surgery. <laughs> I did have a kid. Um, but it wasn't, like, nearly as bad as what my back was going through. So anyways, that was very long-winded. If you have watched all this video, thank you so much for joining me. Um, feel free to like and subscribe. And... Yeah, stick around for next week's video. I try to drop a wid a video. I try to drop a video. I try to drop a video every week. I was thinking of week and video, and it came into video. Um, but yeah, I try to drop a video once a week. So please, if you subscribe and then hit the little bell notification, you'll get notified every time I um, upload a video for your viewing pleasure. And uh, with all that said, have a good one, guys. Bye.